see. Okay, recording to the cloud. And then I'm yeah, trying to see in the... the um, well, when I did it before for somebody else, they had me add them as a host. And then oh, my default, host. Yeah. yeah, my default was just that, but then make sure you can, or mm. you could always send me, send it me the raw files after if that's easy. Can I just do that? Cause I yeah. think when, when I selected this, it said make a host and then it removes me as the host. Okay. And so yeah, if you don't mind, I have a Dropbox account. So if the file is really big, you can always just add it in there. Yeah. Okay. We will do that. All and then right. the only topics I was going to um, request avoiding was the, the pay stuff, the monetization stuff. Um, okay. There's been some interesting things in my own world with, so I'm trying to avoid that, but love the whole, mm -hmm. you know, gender differences and uh -huh. um, love all that. And the sh he for she and yeah. yeah. So I'm sorry. It took me so long to read. I, this is actually my third podcast today. So that's what oh my I also gosh. said in my email. I'm like, feel free to pour yourself a cocktail because I will definitely have a whiskey. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I still have to unpack. I don't know. Although unpacking might actually be more fun with a cocktail. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It could take a little longer, but <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So um, I, I'm recording, but we haven't officially started. Where are you located? So I'm in Orange County. I'm oh, right okay. on the border of Newport Beach and Irvine. I oh, was okay. in West Hollywood. Um, and to be honest, I still, I mean, obviously with the pandemic, I haven't done anything, but yeah. most of my stuff is still in LA. So um, it's just, it's really different. It's, I'm from here. Oh, okay. I, I grew here. up in LA. Um, yeah. Oh, you did? Whereabouts? Where, so where, did, what, yeah, I grew up in Hacienda Heights. Oh, okay. So, yeah. um, Hacienda Heights, do you know where that is? Um, it's kind of a little of bit near I'm... Whittier. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm horrible directions, but a little bit. <laughs> and where are you now? Yeah. So I'm in Portland, Oregon now. As crazy as it looks on the news or has it been over dramatized? It's been, um, you know what it is as, it is as crazy as it looks, but um, but it is also pretty focal downtown. And um, if, I mean, I, you know, my old, I'm a little bit further now as of this week when I moved, but uh, my old home was really only about four miles away. So mm -hmm. like I used to bike there, you know, I used to bike around downtown. And so it was, it was pretty close earlier on when there were a lot of protests and um, I mean, there still are, but they're a lot more focal now. They were getting on the freeways and closing down the freeways. That was definitely getting a little bit closer to my house, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I have, I, you know, and with my son and, um, you know, and we have some families that have done some smaller, you know, family friendly rallies, but it's just, mm -hmm. it is very scary because there is mm -hmm. that violent element to it. Mm -hmm. And, and so, you know, I do get a little bit nervous when it's late at night and oh, totally. things yeah. start happening. Yeah. So it was getting a little bit close, but now I'm, I'm just a couple miles further. And so a little bit insulated because I, I bypass downtown on the freeways. So. Yeah. The, the last podcast I was on was, uh, guy in louisville kentucky and you know that's where uh -huh. brianna taylor was yeah. and so he was saying that they've had a lot going on and they think that's going to be the next step there because there was some kind of ultimatum that if the you know the people that killed her weren't charged by a certain deadline mm -hmm. things were going to happen and so now it's getting close they're like we're basically yeah. going to be like portland and yeah right um, right I'm so proud of you for doing this, even though it's I don't know you, I'm, I'm grateful that Moog <laughs> set us up because, you know, yeah, yeah it, it's, we need more positive energy out there. I read um, your description to my best friend and she's in oh, pharmaceuticals, but she's like yeah. obsessed with, you know, she's got two young girls and just really into women empowerment. Her mom was the mm -hmm. first like female judge in Orange County. And oh, wow. so, um, yeah, so she's like, well, I can't wait to listen to it. And oh, yeah, good. I'm so um, glad. It's such a great okay. concept. And such Thank a needed, you. a needed one. Um, and you're you. so buttoned up. I mean, oh, I still have, I don't feel mine like is like, <laughs> like I kept saying I was going to do a new one every week. And then I'm yeah. like, well, I failed again. <laughs> and well, the editing know, is taking me so long. I, like, I don't edit my own. So oh, you that's, don't. 
Yeah, I actually, I was hooked up with somebody who is um, overseas and she, all she does is podcasts and I'll, I'll send you her info if you ever oh, want it. Yeah. It's very affordable. Um, so, I mean, really? just for time efficiency and just everything else I have going on, I'm like, I, you know, as much as I know I could tinker with this, I'm, I'm te- technologically savvy. I could, uh, you know, and it's all about trying to maximize your skills and your talents. And I'm like, mm-hmm. sure, I can learn how to edit, but you know, you kind of like, Is like you, really you right want to be yeah. the mastermind of your, your empire. Right. And yeah, so yeah. Like, there's a lot more higher level strategization, strategization that only you can do, but there are other things that you can outsource. And so that's how I was like, I can outsource the editing, you know? Totally. And you know, for yeah. me, I was so nervous about having, uh, you know, eventually some of my more famous friends on that I was thinking, I don't want to do it live and I want to make sure I can protect them. And so far I've actually sent the whole thing to each person before I publish it to make sure they're comfortable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It takes so long, but my girlfriend actually said kind of what you said, she's like, you can do a quick run through and cut out anything confidential that they say that they don't want aired and then send Mm -hmm. it to an editor. So yeah, if you could send me their info, I would. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's been one of the hardest obstacles of really being consistent with this podcast is the Mm -hmm. editing part. And yeah. kind of like you, you know, I, I haven't done anything with the video, but the last couple I started recording and then I couldn't get like the audio and video to match up. And I, Oh, I know. <laughs> I'm like, screw it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and I love your repeater. I just have like, oh, thank you. somewhat, somewhat wrinkled background, but, um, yeah. Did, uh, did you have that made? It was actually an NFL alumni did. I worked at oh, golf tournament okay. with them and yeah. yeah so, um, Oh, yeah, for that it. job, like, they did it. And then <laughs> when I decided to make this podcast, you know, it, it's a, kind of a travel one. And I'm like, well, yeah. I may as well set it up here, um, oh, which was really, perfect. I should have filmed that. That was interesting. And watch me by myself try to put this thing together. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, yeah I, I it, should it get something like that. <laughs> yeah, I think Great. it's really easy. I mean, there's so many of those sites. I mean, that yeah, I, I think I haven't, I can't imagine it's more than like, couple hundred bucks at most, I would guess. Oh, and, and this yeah, one's a, a worthwhile one. investment. It, like, breaks down to a smaller one for events. Oh, cool. Again, it was originally made to go on the road and do, um, do stuff on the road, but awesome. now I live here. <laughs> well, temporarily. <laughs> cool. So, um, so I will not talk about the financial bit of it and getting paid and all of that. You so can I'll, ask whatever. I just, and then, yeah. Since we, you do it the way I do, I'll just say like, can we skip this and be one? Like, or, yeah, let's skip that one. Okay. Yeah. Just yeah. let me know, but I'll keep that in mind. And then it'll just be kind of like this. I, I like to keep it really conversational and very casual and, you know, we'll talk about some deep stuff, but I also like to keep it fun. And I personally am like really selfishly excited to talk to you about whiskey as somebody who's newer to whiskey and bourbon. So (laughs) we will definitely talk a little bit of that too, for sure. And um, I know I'm not so supposed I, to say this, but I was told by uh, my mom that I'm like, it's so fun. To, when I, I don't have a lot of Asian friends either. And so I was like, <laughs> I am so excited to like meet this new person. And she's super, I don't know. It's hard because my mom doesn't really work. But when I meet other women that are entrepreneurs yeah. or hustlers and working, and sometimes it's hard to find women around here that it can like this part, don't say, but you know, that I can relate to because yeah. they don't have yeah. a whole lot of ambition other than. Um, which is great to get married, have kids, you know, there's yeah. a lot of ladies of leisure here that don't have kids. Don't In Orange house, County. But yeah, <laughs> they just shop and leisure, you know. Yeah, it's um, just different. It's very different. Yeah, It is different, but I'm so excited you're interested in whiskey too. And then offline, we should talk more too about, you know, some collaborations or what we can do yes, with that. I think that would be really, really fun. Yeah, definitely. So, but fun. yeah, let's get, get started. Okay. And hopefully I'm not too dry mouthy here. Like No, I'm that's sorry. okay. <laughs> Been talking a lot today. Uh, <laughs> so um, I'll pause for a second and then we'll just kind of launch in and ask you about sort of where, where everything started in your childhood and everything else. We'll move on from there. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. We'll pause. I'm so excited, Jackie, to have you on here today with me. I have been really looking forward to talking to you for a very long time. I knew when I heard about you that you were definitely an anomaly in your world, kind of like me. So I'm sure we have a lot in common. So thank you so much for being on. 
Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. So your, your world is the whiskey world, whiskey, bourbon, mm -hmm. scotch. And um, before we get into a little bit more about how you got into that, I'd like to go actually even further back and ask you about your origin story, where you grew up, what your influences were, and kind of the things in your childhood and your upbringing that shaped who you are today. Sure. I was actually born in New Jersey. I moved to- Oh my God, Her me too. I'm sorry to interrupt. What? Me <laughs> no, really? Very exciting. Okay, Where? Where? I mean, I only know. I was born in a place called Fort Lee. Um, I was born in Freehold. <laughs> oh my gosh. That, and I'm not familiar with, with Jersey very much because we left when I was four. But that's so funny. I love that. See, yeah. already. Um, oh, that's so funny. I love that. Yeah, so I was born in New Jersey and moved to Newport Beach when I was four. Grew mm -hmm. up there. Um, at the time, this was you know pre the OC, pre the Housewives, uh, very Caucasian. I felt, although I was like I was popular, you know, I was class president, I was ASB president of the school, but I was never asked to prom. Um, it was like I was good enough, but not really there until Wayne's mm -hmm. World came out. <laughs> and then <laughs> Tia Carrere was like the first kind of exotic hot girl and yeah. literally everything changed growing up. Um, but I How still funny. had those deep seated insecurities from not looking like my peers. And mm -hmm. I remember going to bed and wishing I'd wake up with blonde hair and blue eyes and white skin. And, um, you know, so right off the bat, I think that really did shape a lot of me being kind of feeling like an outsider. Um, mm -hmm. and having more empathy towards outsiders. So mm -hmm. it's kind of funny how then I end up in, you know, a male dominated industry where I am such an outsider, but also an insider. Um, but yeah, so I grew up in Newport Beach. I went to the University of San Diego and I actually graduated college early for a job opportunity in Missouri <laughs> of all places. Oh, wow. So yeah, I've lived in Missouri, Virginia, Italy, Costa Rica, DC, a few places in California, most recently LA, West Hollywood, and um, now I am back in Orange County. Awesome. And how long have you been involved in this, the whiskey business? Not very long at all. Um, it, not, not even two years yet. I celebrated okay. my one year anniversary last October, and it was just such a happenstance type of thing that engulfed my entire life. And I think it Yes, of course, I love whiskey, the actual brown juice, but the confidence <laughs> that I gained and, you know, the, the new friends, the community, the, it just, that's what really defined it for me. And little things, like I'll say, you know, before I would go to a, a bartender and be like, well, I don't know what I want. What do you recommend? You know, and I never realized being able to say, okay, I, today I want uh, four roses, neat you know, with a couple drops of water on the side that I might add later, or, you know, just knowing exactly what you want and exactly how you want it is such a good feeling. And I bet that threw off some of the bartenders when you walked up and said, this is what I want. <laughs> oh girl, it still does. I mean, I still get handed that wine and cocktail list. And it's funny because yeah. sometimes, most of the time, you know, the bartenders are super excited about it. And sometimes if they don't know a lot about whiskey, they, they get a little bit arrogant. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, that's one thing I, I have noticed is that my whiskey community of people that really know whiskey or have learned the right way, which is what I'm trying to promote, is not snobby, is not elitist, is mm -hmm. not judgmental, is not going to tell you what you're smelling or tasting is wrong because it can't be. Um, that's probably one of the questions I get the most from people that ask me for advice on tasting whiskey and being embarrassed to say, mm -hmm. I smell apple because what if there's, what if that's wrong? And I'm like, you can't be wrong. It's subjective. It's like saying I like cilantro or I don't, no one's going to tell you you're wrong or they shouldn't. Now I have right. had people try to tell me I'm wrong on certain things and that's <laughs> it's very rare but that's kind of why i exist is i want to make it more approachable and friendly mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. less intimidating and especially for women Absolutely. Um, for men too though because the ironic thing is men sometimes have a hard time 
admitting to another man if they don't know something or they're oh, not yeah. sure, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm trying to say right, this in the most. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but they'll ask me and it's considered like cool to learn from me, right? And mm -hmm. honestly, it's kind of killing two birds with one stone because now they're being politically correct. And they're, you know, mm -hmm. they're not only going to a woman, but an Asian woman. So brownie points for learning from, you know, somebody so unexpected. But if it's a bunch yeah. of guys out, no one's going to say, oh, I don't, I don't know about this or teach me about that. You know, so it, it's kind of a fun niche with my, um, my male clients too, because mm -hmm. a lot of times they just want that, that confidence that's, genuine. Um, right. And sometimes I give them, depending on personalities, an exercise to really mess it up just to get over the fear, right? <laughs> I mean, it's not as bad as we think it is in our heads. Right. So as we have talked about and alluded to, you are an expert in the world of whiskey. Um, I uh, see that you are an executive bourbon steward. And so tell me a little bit about how one gets into the certification um, program, what's involved in becoming a bourbon steward, and then what do you do with that certification afterwards? Like, tell me about like what it is you do in terms of whiskey education, et cetera. So it's funny because after I had my first sip of whiskey and really enjoyed it and experienced and kept going, I knew right away I wanted to be educated on it. I didn't want to just be, oh, there's a girl posting with bottles of whiskey, but she doesn't know anything, <laughs> you know? Um, so I immediately looked up what kind of certifications are there for whiskey, uh, specifically bourbon, because that was what I, my first sip. Um, and I found a program based out of Louisville, Kentucky, that was an online course. And this was just cool. one month after I had my first sip. And yeah. so of course I, I did that right away. And, you know, just so Asian stereotype, <laughs> like, let me, I, I want this now. Um, and there was the next level was the executive bourbon steward, which you actually go mm -hmm. to Louisville. It's more hands-on. And so I did that in February. So I had my first sip of whiskey in October, I got certified in November, and then by February, I became an executive bourbon steward. And it's really not as intimidating as it sounds. Um, for me, it wasn't tied to any professional goals. It was just credibility. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. as I learn things, I wanna make sure I'm learning the right things. And mm -hmm. I'm sure as you know, so much out there on Google and the internet is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so it's hard to just say, well, I could sit here and Google all these things, I mean, that's got to be one of the most frustrating things to me when I Google something about whiskey and so many times it's incorrect and there's no wow. back checking, you know, and it's, I try to right. not listen to the politics all the time, but I get annoyed about the fact checking with whiskey. <laughs> then I'm like, is it, should this be mm -hmm. Google's responsibility? Like somebody should be policing what's, what we're putting out there to make sure it's accurate. But um, yeah, so I started with that and a lot of people in my class to be an executive bourbon steward, either owned bars, restaurants, mm. worked in distilleries, wanted to become a mm -hmm. master distiller. Um, I was actually the only one that I can think of that was just kind of doing it just for fun as a casual, yeah. um, you know, it wasn't work related. No one was paying for me to go. <laughs> and <laughs> that was my first time ever in Louisville, Kentucky. And so I had actually made a bunch of meetings with several distilleries while I was out there. And again, I just fell in love with these people. And to be honest, I had stereotypes in my mind of what it was going to be like. And, I and was they thinking, probably did for you. <laughs> oh, I mean, well, I, you know, I was thinking they were going to be annoyed with me. Like, who's this Asian chick from LA coming in to learn whiskey? And I don't know. I just thought they'd be annoyed or not so warm and welcoming. And I, I was so wrong. I'm gratefully. I mean, some of the people I love the most today um, are people that I've met in Louisville. And it's just like one, then one opportunity came, a couple opportunities came before that to kind of get my mm -hmm. feet wet in the industry. Mm -hmm. um, but I never really knew what I wanted to do with it. I just knew that I loved sharing about it and I loved learning about it. Um, so I take a sip because you can edit this, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can edit it. <laughs> I'll try to end on like complete sentences so it's not so hard for the editor. <laughs> Hi, <right>. editor. Um, <laughs> so um, 
gosh, what else? I, um, but, you know, in terms of being an executive bourbon steward, I think most people pursue that for hospitality industry or working as, you know, a sommelier or something like that in the industry generally. What's your week to week um, like or your day to day like? Oh my gosh, what's my week to week like these days? That is my goal is to be able to answer that question. I have been struggling <laughs> so much with a schedule and mm -hmm. sticking to it. Um, like most people during this pandemic, I've pivoted and mm -hmm. I'm kind of coming up with multiple different things I want to pursue, but I don't have enough hours in the day and I'm not maximizing the time, the hours that I do have. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I actually just ordered like one of those old school handwritten planners. Cause sometimes even with all the technology and all the apps, I just need to write it down. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm hoping this is gonna, this is gonna help me get a little more organized in my head. But um, so to answer your question for the last couple of weeks, I'm really excited cause I just started, I launched a beta one-on-one -on -one program to teach people about whiskey um, this, cool. this month in August. Yeah, I was super yeah. terrified. And I just sent it to my email list. I didn't put it on social media or anything. And I just said, listen, I, you know, eventually, so I also want to make a whiskey course, but more of an experience. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. again, like I just told you about Google, I don't want it to be just whiskey facts you can Google because I have so many great relationships in the industry from people of all sorts of experts. That's what I want to pass on is, you know, more the hands-on knowledge and make it more fun, more friendly. There are certain topics that I think can be a little intense and a little boring for the casual whiskey fan. <laughs> um, like I already, mm -hmm. in my mind, can think of certain things that I would want to introduce you to, even being from a medical background, like there's so many weird ties, um, you know, going back to how they used whiskey in history and in medicine. And there's just, it's such a cool topic, but anyway, I, I digress. Um, so I launched these 10 beta sessions and it's been so much fun. Cool. I'm about halfway through them. And I've been, uh, you know, I get to talk to each person and say, what do you want out of this? So for example, mm -hmm. one of the sessions I have this week, he wants, you know, more tasting, knowing the difference and asked about vanilla in particular. So I'm actually sending him a package on Monday that has vanilla extract, vanilla beans, because they do smell completely different, and then vanilla flavored candy um, to help him recognize the differences. Because the truth is there's a lot of whiskeys out there too that have artificial, you know, vanilla whiskey, but right. then some of them have real vanilla that come from the process of being in the barrel. Um, mm -hmm. So I think he just needs a little bit more confidence on that. And, you know, being able to, when you smell things side by side, it's easier sometimes than having to, you know, smell something one day and then the next day, and sometimes it won't register that, oh, vanilla beans and vanilla extract don't smell the same. Um, right. So I just, I think two days ago on Instagram, put a post out there and said, okay, you guys, this is what I did. It's going really great. So in September, I'm going to do 10 more. And yeah, cool. so I'm booking that up for September. That's and great. it's just been really, really fun. And then the yeah. podcast, you know, I launched a podcast. So yeah. Um, tell us the name of it. Share, share, share about whiskey. I'm sorry. What was that? So, tell us the name of your podcast. Oh, so I launched a podcast called Whiskey with Jackie James. And, you know, it's, I, I don't have an exact format yet, but it's really about those underlying things, you know, defeating stereotypes, confidence, just mm -hmm. being able to talk with a few whiskey facts sprinkled in that are fun. You know, now some <laughs> people might be more whiskey experts and want to know more than others. And some are, you know, friends that are experts in another field. But mm -hmm. like I said, I, I, I don't know how to explain it right, but whiskey crosses over in so many different ways that, um, it's just really cool. And I found one of my favorite things and just stop me if I'm talking too much or rambling That's too okay. much, but one of my, um, so one of my one-on-ones was really cool because it was actually a gift. It was a husband gifting his wife and it was, she was a big wine person. And so uh -huh. smelling and tasting whiskey is actually pretty similar to wine. Um, but what's really fun is they have two young kids. And so he was really looking for something different that they could do as an activity together. Of course, he selfishly loves scotch. Um, but what was really cool is 
when he reached out to me, he's like, Jackie, I could never be like, I want to teach you about whiskey. She would blow me off. But to give her a gift certificate <laughs> to do an hour with you, um, you know, you're more like her. I think she could relate to you more and you'd probably break her in easier than me throwing, you know, some really strong, high proof scotch at her. Mm -hmm. And it's been so fun because she did love it, but she loved it so much that now, I mean, they've all, they've become friends. And so, you know, after the kids go to bed, he gets to teach her. He gets to pour oh, cool. Japanese whiskey, Canadian whiskey, scotch, Irish, and ask her, you know, what, what do you smell? What do you taste? And so it's kind of, in a way, made their relationship even stronger. And I'm so proud of that. I'm like, oh, see, whiskey's magic. Marriage is, yeah, marriage is brought closer with whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and another That's gal awesome. is already planning her Christmas, and she wants to host a whiskey tasting for her family. And I'm like, what a cool idea. So, you know, she has me teaching her kind of how to go about that. But I'm loving seeing more women be excited about whiskey. And there's two schools because uh, I'm trying to say this not that won't offend anybody, but um Okay, so when I first got into whiskey, I was intimidated because a lot of the mm -hmm. women that I came across that were really knowledgeable in whiskey were very opposite of me and not mm -hmm. people that I felt I could relate to. And I won't lie, I had, you know, just one, but kind of negative experience from another woman that did not like me entering the whiskey space. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm a pretty sensitive person by nature and a recovering people pleaser. So it, it, that, that one hit me hard. It was a little discouraging. But um, with my friends that are used to drinking wine, vodka soda, um, basically women that were me before I drank whiskey, it's so fun to watch their faces and see them light up as they learn and taste and realize it doesn't have to be. We all have that first experience of some cheap whiskey and high school oh, or yeah. college that was sitting out in the sun and it's awful and you think, you know, I can't drink that. And it's like, oh my gosh, no, there's so many different ones. And, you know, even if something else want to start with cocktails, there's so many fun cocktails. One quick example, you know, I love Mai Tais, Hawaiian stuff, but they are a little sweet for me. So instead of the rum, which is already sweet, you, you know, you have the pineapple juice, you have all this other yummy stuff. I love making Mai Tais with bourbon. And it kind of cuts that uh. real sweetness. Um, but that's one of my fun, like, that's one of the things I love to do too, is experiment with cocktails or talk to my friends that are bartenders. And, you know, if they're so kind to let me be the guinea pig on trying some fun things, for, I think for Margarita Day this year, I was like, no, make me Margarita, but we just need. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> So you, you mentioned that when you first started, you encountered another woman who, instead of being supportive of you, was adversarial. And, you know, it's unfortunate because I think in a lot of fields like ours, where mm -hmm. there really just aren't a lot of women, you hope that when you meet another woman, you'll find a peer, a mentor, somebody who will welcome yeah. you in with open arms. And, and it's not always the case. Now, I found that within my field, we have had a growing community of women and it has become pretty amazing where there is a lot of positivity, but it wasn't always that way. And I, I had had similar experiences too. What's your take on why, why you think that is? They need to drink more whiskey. It's insecurity. <laughs> and I, it's ironic because the gal that I'm telling you about, and there was just one, but you know how they say it takes seven um, compliments to get over the one criticism in your head. It's so yeah. easy to hang on to the negative, but uh, she actually has come around and apologized to me, by the way, as like, you know, I move forward in whiskey oh. and, you know, I forgive everybody. That doesn't mean I'm going to welcome her to my home or anything. But so my take on, on that is insecurity. And mm -hmm. I worked in corporate America for 13 years before I went off mm -hmm. on my own. And I have this conversation quite a bit because I, uh, as much good has come out of the Me Too movement, I have mm -hmm. an issue with the fact that we have not looked at ourselves as women. And mm -hmm. I'm not the only one that, but I, I will only tell my story. Looking back in my years at corporate, yes, I was sexually harassed. I was sexually assaulted. I was all those things. And yes, it was devastating. 
But you know what was so much more devastating than that was the female boss that I had that treated me like crap every single wow. day. And I could do no yeah. right. I would cry. Oh my gosh. It was worse than any breakup I've ever had. And I called my wedding off two weeks before my twenties. And I'm telling you work, work women were worse to me. Wow. Um, I remember being written up for coming to work with damp hair that it wasn't totally dry because it made it. I mean, I'm Asian, so it's not, it, it didn't look unprofessional. It was just looking for things. When I worked at uh, <laughs> Nissan North America, oh, I remember gosh. my first week at a new office, my manager was like, this is so uncomfortable, but I kind of have to tell you this gal complained about you to HR because you smile too much and it makes her uncomfortable. <laughs> um, <laughs> I smile too, like you can't, <laughs> you can't win. <laughs> and then he was like, and you know, I mean, we can't really write you up for that. But I, I, I did tell her I would talk to you. I'm like, what, what you want me to not smile? I mean, so oh my God. I think, but I do have a theory on this and that is that growing up, um, for me, and again, I can only speak to my, my story, my circumstances, but I remember playing a lot of house, pretty, pretty princess, mm -hmm. where there was enough room for one wife, one princess, yep. one winner. And meanwhile, the boys were playing team sports and learning mm -hmm. how to give credit to their peers. Now, granted, women played team sports too. And as I got to know more people in sports, I asked a professional soccer player if this, mm -hmm. if my theory was accurate and she was like oh my gosh no we're so much worse in sports <laughs> and I'm like, then what is our problem then and i really do believe it's insecurity it's um we have been pitted against each other we've done it to ourselves mm -hmm. and we have this fear of there's only enough room for one of us and i try to say as many times as possible especially for asian american women that want to get into whiskey don't look at me like oh there's no room for me because Jackie checked that box. You know, she's the whiskey mm -hmm. expert. She's the, the LA Asian whiskey expert. No, there's room for, I mean, how many guys that look like John Wayne are out there? You know, why <laughs> do we do that to ourselves? And right. um, on it's that setting note. Limits. Yeah, it's like we're yes. setting limits for ourselves. Do you know, I, I am a whiskey expert and I'm just, I'm so still so uncomfortable calling myself that, but this last week I've decided, yeah, it's time. And you know what it was. And you just have to own it. <laughs> when, well, when Kanye West decided to run for president and I know he has mental health issues, but in general, I have found that men can be much more confident than women when it comes to raising their hand for a position that they may not be totally qualified for. And, you know, I've, been taking these courses, trying to learn how to best shape my one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. And it's funny because I'm so excited to make everybody else a whiskey expert. And, but I'm like, but am I one, am I one? And so one of these courses I'm taking says, you know, you only need to know 10% more than the average person to be considered an expert in the field. Now I'll tell you, I'm like, I know like 90% of whiskey and it's the 10% <laughs> that I don't know that makes me feel like an imposter or like a fraud by saying mm -hmm. I'm an expert if I don't know that 10%. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. there are people, gentlemen in particular, that will call themselves a whiskey expert and know maybe 10% at best. So yeah. for me, it was a trigger when Kanye ran for president and I realized, you know, mental health issues aside, again, his situation is different, but looking back on my corporate career, how many times I didn't raise my hand for a promotion because I didn't mm -hmm. think I deserved it when in actuality, I could have been that position's boss, you know? Um, and yeah, it's so I've been owning it. And the funny thing is that in these one-on-ones, the best part is when I don't know something and I tell mm -hmm. them, let me find out. So just yesterday, um, I put on my Instagram stories actually. So Balvaney is a scotch company who I, mm -hmm. um, they sent me a bunch of samples. I, I mean, I've been studying about scotch, but I've never met anyone from there before. I didn't know how to pronounce it. So I did an Instagram story and I said, oh, thank you so much, Balvany, for, you know, these samples. And by the way, it is spelled with, like the way, it, I said it the way it looks. So um, a gal actually corrected me and she said, try it, you know, and sounded it out for me. And I screenshot it, I thanked her and then I screenshot it and put it on my stories. I'm like, I love learning from smarter women. 
Well, then I get another a response from another woman saying, you know what, you are the whiskey expert and I don't think that's appropriate for you to admit when you don't know something like that. You know, wow. she said, have you ever heard of <laughs> fake it till you make it? And uh, it's just exhausting. And, I, you know, I said, yes, I've heard of fake it till you make it, but I don't know who that helps. I mean, this doesn't discount me being a whiskey expert because I didn't know how to pronounce the name properly. I've never met someone from that company before. I mean, yeah, maybe it's a big name, but I'm not, I'm not spending my time right. going, how do I pronounce this? I'll learn and then I'll correct right. it. And then I get to share yeah. the, the credit to, for the woman who corrected me. And I love that it was a woman. Um, yeah, no, it's an interesting so, balance, you know, and it's, it's an interesting balance between having, having the, the confidence, the honesty to, to just, just say, I don't know, but yet yes. balance that with not letting imposter syndrome take over right because we have kind of simultaneously this tendency to say oh I can't do it I don't deserve it there's mm -hmm. not enough room for me but on the other hand we also have to be able to say you know what I that don't part know, I believe in fake learn. it till you make it that part I agree <laughs> with fake it till you make it that's what I think that phrase was made for because yeah. we're not comfortable owning it but if you really are making a mistake or you know this this concept of perfect you know the Instagram filters the Photoshop the all I mean, I struggled with my image growing up in so many ways. And that's when magazine covers had airbrushed models. Now you have full blown, you know, Instagram, Snapchat filters. And my heart goes out to those 12 year old, 13 year old girls that are thinking yep. they're not as pretty or they're not this, or they're not that because they're comparing themselves to false standards. Um, right. But yeah, so. I, it just makes me so, it makes me proud of myself, to be honest, to be at a place where I'm like, I am a whiskey expert and I'm realizing through these one-on-ones and, you know, I don't, unless I have someone that gives me express permission to share, you know, it's whiskey, whiskey, uh, whiskey, whiskey or confidentiality, I guess. <laughs> but, but, you know, that's the funny thing is um, the difference between the men and the women I've worked with, mm -hmm. with the women in particular, that is such that is our biggest weakness in my mind. And it all rolls back up into why women are so hard on each other. It's that confidence that um, when I was on my flight back from Louisville from that first trip after becoming an executive bourbon steward, I had just mm -hmm. come from learning about whiskey. I had my book in my bag. I sat next to a guy who was a scotch lover and just started trying to correct me on things and tell me things that I knew weren't true but he was so <laughs> certain of it it was like I am just coming back from class I have a book in my purse right now that he's wrong but he's so confident about it that it's almost like if somebody was saying the sky is purple the sky is purple and you it's know the sky is blue. <laughs> but yeah but yeah exactly and I'm like so for the women I'm like when we know something don't fake it but if we know something if you know the sky is blue yeah we need to be stronger and not back down and say no that sky is blue and you know my girlfriend that called me oh gosh i mean it was a couple months ago now but she was in a meeting and she's in a male dominated field as well and she corrected somebody on a conference call mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. in a bad way or a mean way but she corrected him oh my gosh she called me worrying so much like oh my god i shouldn't have done that do i look like a bitch now am i this am i that and i said listen if the role, if, if it was a guy that corrected an, another guy, do you think he would spend two seconds or a guy correcting a woman? Do you think he would spend two seconds worrying about this, let alone calling all his friends and be like, oh, what did I do? You know? And she was like, yeah, you're right. And yeah. in that sense, I'm like, we shouldn't look down on them. We should on both genders, both sexes, we should learn from each other. And that's right. what I think as women, we need to learn from men is that confidence. Now on the flip side, mm -hmm. men need to learn how to humble themselves and that it's okay to not know and not just make stuff up, which a lot of them like to do. And right. so with my male clients, when it's, it's funny, it's like an exercise because even with me, they'll be like, and I can see them trying to come up with a BS answer. And I'm like, you know, you can say, you don't know that yet. <laughs> And it, it, it's blown me away with how many, I'm like, how many times do you guys just make up stuff to sound like you know what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like you, you need know? to prompt them a little bit, prod them a little bit. Like it's okay. Yeah. And, that, and that's why I'm always like, what would whiskey do? Like whiskey is so authentic, but it's bold. It's unapologetic. Um, I think we could all learn from that, but 
Yeah. So I try to share as many mistakes that I make as possible to also show people that you can be a quote unquote expert and yeah. still make mistakes and still and learn. Make and anyone who tells me they're human. not, they're not real. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. So I have a question for you and, and I, I kind of understand this now switching gears to, to uh, whiskey. Um, what is for those of us who are maybe a little bit less familiar, what mm -hmm. is the difference between whiskey and bourbon and scotch? Cause I know that for people who are new to it, they're like, are they all the same? Are they different? So what's your, you know, kind of like whiskey, bourbon, scotch for idiots, you know, primer. So all, bourbon, scotch, those are classifications of whiskey. So whiskey is your number one word, right? That every, so I think there's a saying that says all bourbon is whiskey, but not all whiskey is bourbon, which could be mm -hmm, applicable mm -hmm. for scotch, Irish whiskey, Canadian, Japanese. Um, one fun fact that I'll share for your listeners is sometimes you'll see whiskey spelled with an E, W-H-I-S-K-E-Y, which is how I spell it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you'll see it W-H-I-S-K-Y with no E. And uh -huh. it's funny because I personally thought there was some elaborate answer to why that was. Do you have any idea or any guesses? No, I thought it was a typo. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought it had an E. <laughs> so we live in the United States of America. So here it is generally spelled with an E. Now this isn't absolute. There are some exceptions, but rule of thumb, it's so simple. It's the name of the country that is producing that whiskey, if that country has an, an E in the spelling, like United States of America, no, stop. Ireland, <laughs> then it's spelled with an E. If so it's Japan? coming from Scotland, Japan, <laughs> no E. No E in the country name, no E in the whiskey. That I know, is it's so simple. Isn't I've that insane? <laughs> right? I know. <laughs> See, how fun is whiskey with me? <laughs> oh my gosh, that but, is too funny. And you know, it's funny because there's always, not always, but in kind of the more educated whiskey world, always someone goes, whoa, but what about Maker's Mark, Maker's Mark, Maker's Mark, you know, spelled it W-H-I-S-K-Y. And you know, they come from more Scottish heritage and to honor Scotland, mm -hmm. they purposely spelled it that way, but they're an uh, exception. Um, but oh generally gosh, speaking, that's all it is. And that's an awesome little fact to it. I cannot wait fact? to use that on Yes. <laughs> yes. And it's almost yeah. so ridiculous that you think it's BS, but it's real. Yeah. I mean, that it's at least for me, I was like, am I on punk or something? Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I'll tell you, you are very confident in telling me that. So I believe that it is true. <laughs> I don't know everything, but I know that. <laughs> So um, recently, recently on social media among the medical community, there was mm -hmm. um, there was a movement in which um, a lot of women were um, being shamed for being in their bikini. And I think the, the hashtag was med bikini. And this all started after an academic journal in a vascular surgery. Uh, a, a, it was an article in a vascular surgery journal that like rated, you know, how many times women were being inappropriate on social media, women surgeons, and uh, that they were in bikinis or they were in sexy Halloween costumes. And Maybe it was just whiskey. very, yeah, you, you, yeah, take a sip for this one. Um, you know, and it was just, it was very, there was a lot of double standard. It was, it was fully ridiculous, suggesting that a woman can't be good at what they do, in this case, a surgeon, and be professional and still wear a bikini. So, you know, it created this huge firestorm. And, and I wanted to share with you, like, I think for me, for a long time, I was thinking, okay, well, you know, I'm a surgeon, I'm a physician. And so like, I have to be this, you know, this mm -hmm. stodgy white coat wearing person. Mm -hmm. And here I am on my podcast, talking about whiskey and I can freely admit that I like to drink whiskey and it's like really liberating, you know, <laughs> yeah, and it's yes. just that we, we can wear bikinis, we can, or not, or wear whatever, you know, we can wear a paper sack and just be like, I'm proud of it and drink whiskey and be professionals and kind of play all these different roles in our lives and not be any less for doing one thing. Mm-hmm you know, doing more than one thing. 
And yeah. so I don't know if you had seen that, but I wanted to mention that because I, I think that it is very liberating to be like, I do, you know, I do this, I drink whiskey and it's- Well, I am okay. so proud of you and honored to know hey. you and can't <laughs> wait to get to know you even better because of that. And I'm not a mom, Aww. but I hear that a lot with my mom friends too, like the mom shaming that you're not supposed to wear a bikini if you're a mom. Okay. So again, it's all insecure. Right. Why? Because you feel like you look frumpy. So, I mean, <laughs> it, it's, yeah, but I There's... will ask, cause I don't want to <laughs> assume anything. Cause there is a flip side on men on that too. But the, the people that were mm -hmm. giving so much backlash, was it mainly men or women? I mean, obviously there's fewer women in the industry, but was it mainly coming from men or women? Well, I think, you know, the, the majority of the authors on that paper were men, although there was one woman. Uh, and I will say that just uh, across the board, especially within surgical fields, but in medicine in general, you know, a lot of times the editorial boards of these academic journals tend to be male heavy. And so, mm -hmm. you know, there are, there, there are things that are still very old school, you know, and mm -hmm. of course uh, on social media, the, the women physicians and, and a lot of the he for she's were just like, this is ridiculous. And it's mm -hmm. unbelievable that in this day and age, believable slash unbelievable that the, in this day and age, that something like this uh, is actually even published and taken even, uh, even taken seriously. So one of the companies, um, the two big, big companies I worked at in corporate um, for, like I said, I mean, almost 14 years, one of them um, still required us as women to wear pantyhose to work. Oh dear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my knows. gosh. I'm not that old. Wow. And he wow. Um, was a private billionaire owner. So you know what? He makes the rules. He can, he can mm -hmm. ask for whatever he wants. Um, but I think it also comes down to men and women. It's all insecurity. We just show it in different ways. And right. the other part that I really try to drive home with whiskey is when you grow your own confidence, you eventually care less and less about what other people think and mm -hmm. trying to please the masses or do mm -hmm. what you're supposed to. Um, that has been a struggle for me in my personal life with my own family that mm -hmm. doesn't understand why I'm choosing to be single right now. Um, mm -hmm. You know, before I age and my value goes down or nobody wants me. <laughs> I mean, it's such... <laughs> I mean, I'm so like, old fashioned. And meanwhile, <laughs> yesterday I see like Halle Berry posting on her 50 what birthday with her cute little butt hanging out. And I'm like, you know, she, it's, I just think it's so much insecurity. And I, I understand even so that I still have a lot of friends that work at that company I'm referring to. And, you know, they're all, their Instagrams are private. Um, Mm, there's mm -hmm. like technically the rules and then there's like the unspoken rules right the examples right. I gave myself being called into my manager's office mm -hmm. for smiling too much they can't actually write me up for that <laughs> but right somebody was upset enough an insecure woman <laughs> And the other thing I want to be fair about is they're usually, at least in my experience, they were newer managers and it's, it's only been a couple mm -hmm. of them. I also, one of the best managers I've ever had is still one of my best friends today. And I love her because she has a quiet confidence about her that even we talked the other day and she's like, but I'm not like you. I'm not confident. I'm like, oh my gosh, girl, you are so confident that I would even say <laughs> sometimes those of us that talk the most and the loudest are the least confident. <laughs> I've grown into becoming confident, but I always talked a lot. I always liked being in the spotlight and, you know, I never like lied to fake it, but I didn't understand my own insecurities, my own jealousy issues, my own com like competitive issues. Mm -hmm. So as I've gotten more confident and older, I think it's something that my wish for the world is for women, especially to feel this confidence before they spend 14 years, like I did, fighting, trying to be a square peg in a round hole to make it, right. fit, you know? Right. Um, and I'm always so worried about offending other people and offending, you know, stay-at-home moms, housewives, ladies of leisure that don't have kids. Like, I'm not judging your lifestyle, but 
and a lot of times back to the men, men get confused by this too. You know? <laughs> and I actually got to a point about a year ago that I said, well, clearly I have some kind of like secret, like third boob or secret penis or something. <laughs> because yeah, that's the only thing that could explain why I am single. Not God forbid I choose to be single. And I'm choosing myself for the first time. And I always yeah. laugh by saying whiskey is my boyfriend or bourbon is my boyfriend. <laughs> but it kind of is because it, it's, it's helping me find me and grow. It's challenging me to grow into the person that I want to be. So when I meet that right guy, whether or not he's in my life today, right. I want to be a better version of me. And I want them, I want to earn you know, mm -hmm. the level of kind of guy that I want to be with, I'm not, I'm close, but I'm not quite there yet. Mm -hmm. There's a couple like gold check marks I have in my head that I want to accomplish. <laughs> and I'm not saying I have to do it before, right. but in my history, like in my past relationships, I would always put the guy's work before mine. Always. Yeah. I mean, now it's your turn. <laughs> yeah. And I, I will admit yeah. that if I was dating somebody seriously right now and they said, oh my gosh, Jackie, I need your help. I need you to come dazzle this work event for me. Or I have a doctor's dinner, you know, and I was working on something for me for whiskey. I would drop it to go help him. So mm -hmm. I don't want to, well, actually, I don't know if I do that anymore. <laughs> but, I mean, for <laughs> most of my life I would have, right? Yeah. Um, it's a give and take. It's a given in any relationship, it's a give and take, but you know, if you're constantly giving, 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 then, then you don't get to find that self-fulfillment at the and, end of the day. And we need you to don't, make those Instagram. Your legacy. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. that's, you know, oh, and I'm not saying I don't want a family someday. I froze my eggs actually when I was 36. So, I mean, technically I have four kids on ice, <laughs> I wanted to cross them. <laughs> but you know, that was such a blessing too, because with science and with everything where we're at, mm -hmm. we don't expire or, you know, our value doesn't decrease, but there is a lot of people that still have that mentality. And I think most of the world is still run by Caucasian men, um, mm -hmm. older with older school values. And I will, mm -hmm. will tell you, even getting into whiskey has been funny because some of some of my clients are in that demographic. And mm -hmm. it's so funny because they'll be like, scotch, scotch. Like, why are you a bourbon girl? You need to get into scotch. Scotch is luxury. And I'm like, tell me what you know about scotch. Did you know that scotch is actually made in used bourbon barrels? <laughs> like, that's where you get that, you know, and you get the yummy caramel coloring from bourbon. And they're like, oh, no. I'm like, yeah, uh-huh. You just think that because it's a stereotype or it's a luxury image. Um, same thing with bourbon though, you know, Pappy. Say that Michael, again because it cut, say, say that last sentence again because you cut out. Um, so many times it's a perception of luxury or an image that a person wants to be that luxury human being. So that means they pick scotch over bourbon without actually even knowing what they like. And, you know, that I'm starting to get more into scotch right now too, but they're totally different babies to me, like completely different, but at least I, I know what I like and what I don't. And it has nothing to do with other people's opinions. I get so excited because I get to be the one that kind of changes it. And, you know, some of the people I've worked with, we've, I make them do blind taste tests. Um, even if they're by themselves, like with a lazy Susan, we'll get a bunch of glasses, <laughs> I have them write it down, post it underneath, yeah. close their eyes, spin it, you know, sing the ABCs. And a lot of times they like, a less expensive brand than they're telling the world they like. And I'm like, but there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, You're yeah. sitting here saying you only drink Pappy Van Winkle. Well, first yep. of all, it means you don't drink very much. <laughs> and if you're doing a blind taste test and you can't tell the difference, <laughs> don't be that guy. We got enough of those guys, you know, drink what you like. Yeah. If you like it on ice, <laughs> right. on the rocks, if you like it neat, if you like it in a cocktail, it doesn't matter. So people, whenever they say, how am I supposed to drink my whiskey? I'm like, however the heck you like it. End of story. Anyone that tells it. you different <laughs> is an asshole. And you don't want to drink whiskey with them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but, so one um, of the things, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say to wrap up your, um, the comment about, you know, the bikinis and being doctors and being able to do it all. I think mm -hmm. as, um, as progressive or modern as we are, we're not really, we've moved fast in a short amount of time, which I think has 
cause mm-hmm. backlash too for people that are uncomfortable mm-hmm. with it. But if you really look mm-hmm. at how much time has gone by, um, I mean, I'm not that old. And I think of, you know, I had to wear pantyhose to work every day. <laughs> it's pretty, yeah. it's pretty antiquated. Right. And a lot of people still think that way. Mm-hmm. And if most of our, uh, the control and the money out there is defined by people that are used to certain, I don't want to say values, but certain ways of familiarity or tradition. Um, mm-hmm. I don't want to say the company name, but I'll give an example. Um, when I worked in commercial real estate, we had tenants that were very old school, conservative, um, Amazon moved in and Mm -hmm. Amazon wanted to come in their skateboards and t-shirts and guess what? They had a lot more money, (laughs) but the conservatives were very like, I don't want to work in a building where there's kids running around in t-shirts and you know, so, and that was, back when I worked there, which, you know, I mean, seven years ago. So it was a while ago, but it was still, I mean, that's it. Seven years. Now you look at yeah. these, I mean, I just had this conversation the other day. If you look at, you know, you've seen those memes with like Mark Zuckerberg and Bill Gates and t-shirts and, you mm-hmm. know, my dad, he's passed now. Um, he never had that kind of money, but I remember he would say, why would I want anyone to know I have something? Cause then they want something from me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I have found that that I've found with my really successful friends, um, they kind of are on that page, but they're more understated. They don't need attention. And it's usually right. the people that are so flashy that, um, you know, need that recognition or, mm-hmm. yeah. Right. So I'm proud of women I... starting to step up and, and <laughs> own their their stuff. But at the end of the day, I also empathize when you work for you, when you work for a company, that's a private boss, you got to, I understand all the private Instagrams out there. I, I just hope that I hope that, you know, you and I doing these types of things, getting our voices out there, putting our faces out there. um, Mm -hmm. I honestly had a comment from my mother a month ago because I had posted something in quarantine and it was a dog carrier because I have a five pound Yorkie and his legs were getting tired, but I was wearing a sports bra and like little booty shorts and tennis shoes. And you couldn't see anything because, you know, I had the dog on my, in front of me. Um, but she made sure to let me know that somebody (laughs) made a comment to her about how risque my posts were and why did I feel the need to do that? (laughs) And um, this was, it was a moment for me because, you know, my mom's the number one person I've always tried to people please. So it was a big moment for me to just look at her and say, yeah, why, why do I feel the need to post that? Probably because I wanted attention. I'm like, and I'm like I know you're looking for some deep <laughs> answer, but we've been in this pandemic. I haven't had a hug since March 9th. Um, I probably just wanted some attention. That's it. And you can tell your friend there's a button on Instagram that she can click to unfollow me and she won't have to see me be so risque anymore. Right. End of story. Yeah, it, it sounds like a personal problem. <laughs> but that's the thing is so many of these issues stem from other women. And that's why I'm hoping, I do yeah. have faith for our younger generations. It seems like, it seems like some of the younger generation is being um, more mindful and more, yeah, you can be yeah. hot and brilliant, you know? Um, <laughs> I don't know. How do you feel about it as a doctor in, with that true, true. article? And I mean, even wearing red lipstick the way you are, well, it's you so know, pretty, but some people would judge I, oh, you, you know. when I was in corporate. <laughs> oh, that, I yeah. remember uh, somebody said that's, that's a, what do they call it? Like a working girl's racing. color. So <laughs> I'm like, I'm like red or dead. I oh, love red gosh. lipstick, but even that got judged. Exactly. Well, you know, I'll, I'll bust it out anytime I can now because I'm always in a mask. So I, I definitely love my red lipstick, but I, you know, and, and I, everybody kind of has their own level of comfort for what they're going to put out on a public forum. But I mean, that's the point you put out what you're comfortable with and it's, it's an individual decision and it's not anyone else's. So, you know, like I said, it's like, you could be in a bikini, you could be in a paper bag and like, I, I don't think that women and their competence, their intelligence, or their professionalism should be judged based on that. Yeah, but, we can redefine it right now. We're in a time absolutely. that's so awesome. 
one of my biggest pet peeves is watching these movies where women executives are trying to join the boys club. So they grab a bottle of Johnny Walker blue label, <laughs> but they don't like it, but they think that's what they're supposed to bring that scotch to join. The, right. like, well, what's cool is now we can redefine it. And I don't know. I think we're in a really, really cool space right now. A really cool time to make some. I agree. Impact. And we have a lot <laughs> of great men out there that are supportive and want mm -hmm. to help. Um, much more than I think society gives credit for. Yep. Um, I would yeah. agree. So I always like to ask my guests if they mm -hmm. had one piece of advice for a woman who wants to go into their field. So say you meet somebody mm -hmm. who wants to be the next Jackie James, what's your advice for her? Get uncomfortable. Get comfortable getting uncomfortable. And even if that, that means little things like walk into an elevator and face the wrong way and stare at your <laughs> stranger, it is so uncomfortable. But I think challenging myself to be uncomfortable has what's forced me to grow the fastest. Um, so that would be my advice is whatever you're scared of, tackle it. Don't face run it. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we stop growing when we, when we don't do that. So I, that's awesome advice. I would love it for our listeners to be able to find you online. You mentioned your Instagram and your podcast. So if you could just tell us where you are online, the name of your podcast again, I would love for them to be able to follow you as well. I would love to connect with your listeners and they can find me at, at Jackie James on Instagram or JackieJames.com is my website. And my podcast, Whiskey with Jackie James, is on Apple, Spotify, iHeart media. I mean, you know, there's so many of them, but basically just um, JackieJames.com will have all the links to everything. Awesome. I so much enjoyed it having you on. I love talking about our, our mutual sorry, sorry. commonality. You, I think you need to do that one again because it froze. Yeah. Did it cut out? Yeah. Yeah. My screen just froze. Okay. In the Can audio you hear me now? now? Yes. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yep. So uh, thank you so much for being on. I was so excited to have you on and to be able to talk about our commonalities and our respective fields, but also to get a little bit of whiskey knowledge. I can't wait to talk to you more in the future. And perhaps I'll be booking one of those private one-on-one -on -one whiskey education sessions with you. So thanks again, Jackie. It was so good having you on. Thank you so much for having me. And I would love that. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Is that a good it's ending? A wrap. <laughs> yes. No, it's great. We I talk so have. much. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's great. There's so much good stuff in there. I really wish I had poured something for myself so I could have. Uh, we'll have to do it again. You well, I want you to be you. on mine. So yeah, <laughs> oh, well, you'll, we'll have to you. schedule have you on mine, and then um, maybe we'll. Um, I, that's the only thing about the virtual. It's like, well, maybe I can send you some some stuff because as I get to know you better, I feel like I'll know what to